so we've got year 12 and year 13 in here? Okay, so how many of you have not actually applied to medical school who are still thinking about it? Is everybody in already? Champion, okay. So, to you guys, what kind of medics, what kind of doctors, what kind of surgeons do you think you want to be? Obviously, we're going to follow up with why. Come on, okay. Um, pediatrics. Pediatrics, okay, little people, why is that? Okay, fair enough. So what you mean is you get to enjoy Christmas more. All right. Uh, what other things do people think that they want to do? Um, a GP. GP. Why do you want to be a GP? Um, because I like the fact that you know your patients a bit better. You will come to regret that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a good rapport with them. And... Okay. What, what, what other... Th I, am, I am a GP. We'll come to that in a minute. What other specialties do people think that they want to do? What are they interested in at the minute? Emergency medicine, excellent. So, what kind of thing? What's you know driving you to become an adrenaline junkie? Okay, all right. So you, you'll do quite well at medical school with that. So, the, uh, uh, an important thing that I'm trying to say with this is, you guys have ideas about where it is you want to go, what it is that you think that you'd want to do, and that does relate in some ways to the MMI. Um, so. A&E, you're going to be thinking on your feet. GP, you're going to be screaming inside your head and thinking on your feet. Peds, you're going to be thinking on your feet to avoid the shots of vomit that are coming from children. A lot of the MMI does involve you being able to think on your feet. So I'm sure that you've all heard the, uh, the apocryphal stories from Cambridge, the question of what can you do with a brick? You know, they just give you it and just see, can you spin a story out from there? A lot of these things are based on judgment. So, um, again, another one that um, you'll see a lot of places is, uh, from an ethics side of things, you've got 15 people in a room, you've got a rough idea who they are, How are you, who of those 15 do you choose to save in a nuclear apocalypse? You might think that these things are really out there and weird, but it does actually connect to what you have to do in the real world. Can you think on your feet, and can you get your brain engaged with the problem you've got in front of you and the stuff that uh, you've been taught at medical school? So, again, given that the presentation is ever so slightly shafted, uh, we're going to try and show how some of the slightly more outrageous things I get up to connect to life as a GP, which I would genuinely suggest everybody should apply for. But there's, that's, that's more discussions for medical school rather than with yourselves. So, um, actually, three, actually that, that particular in itself, 360 days ago, uh, that was me sat on a beach in Panama waiting for Bear Grylls to come and pick us up so we can go home. Um, one of the benefits of uh, doing medicine um, is that you can use it to do what you want. You can think on your feet and you can twist um, your specialties to get the fullness out of your life. So I dressed up as one of the guys from Thunderbirds um, and we headed off uh, to do Bear Grylls the Island filming in Panama for six weeks. And you think, hold on, how does this relate to uh, MMI? I'm going to try and ex show how doing something as outrageous as that connects to the regular work I do in GP and how what it looks like on the surface is still going to connect to common or garden medicine underneath. So one of the things that we had to do before we set off, we, we only had about three weeks to prepare, was you know, dealing with heavy, do heavy levels of nutrition to try and bulk up as much as we could before we flew. Now, you can do all the science if you want to, or you can take the shortcuts and take the simple route and just drink double cream. Difficult, but it is possible. And that's, again, a line with the MMIs. You'll get a question and you think, hold on, right, I can see this, that, and the other. There's 15 moving components for this here. I can give something here that's going to really make them a stellar answer. And you may be correct. Then there'll be the other guy that says, yeah, there is this very complicated answer, or there's this nice, simple one. You don't have to wow them, you just have to be correct, okay? What I'd suggest is be perfectly, gloriously average. If you go off on one and try and be stellar, then there's every chance you could drop the ball, okay? Make sure that your answers and things are sensible. Make sure they make sense and you can follow them through in your own head. You're less likely to make mistakes with that. 
Okay, so after the nutrition, it didn't work particularly well. We ended up eating about 800 calories a day, um, and I came back 14 kilos lighter. There's not a lot of me to lose in the first place, so that was slightly difficult. Staying with the whole idea of thinking on our feet, a GP ended up going down to the London School of Tropical Medicine to work out how to care for this crazy bunch there on the island. Um, and everybody, in some way, shape, or form, um, had to go to our jungle clinic, as it were. Um, however, each of those problems that we encountered was just regular GP work wrapped up in an interesting wrapper. I'm going to go back to the, what can you do with a brick? How can you choose which of these people are you going to survive on your nuclear apocalypse? We will dress things up in a wrapper, but it's to see how you guys interpret uh, the question we're going through. So the actual island itself um, is off the coast of Panama, and because we're a load of geeks, we actually found it on Google Maps and prepared as much as we could to work out how to survive on it. From the producer's perspective, though, they cho choose this location because it's geopolitically stable. We were unlikely to end up in a war, although we did have pirates turning up. Uh, we're unlikely to get problems with malaria, and we're unlikely to die of anything significantly nasty in terms of the flora and fauna over there. But those things still needed to be covered, so we had a, a rough level of education before we started. There was always backup, and that's what you're going to get in life. As a, as a doctor, there'll always be somebody that you can hopefully call for, even if it turn, turns out that that person is on the other end of the phone in America. At Walsgrave, we've got the amazing Da Vinci robots where we can actually get a surgeon in America to do the operation at Walsgrave using the robot, using the controls over there, and he will control the robot over here. Always make sure they ask for advice. And we got these guys about 15 minutes away on a separate island, Living, living quite a nice life, actually. Uh, and if we needed, we could pull them in. I think we only pulled them in about twice whilst we were there. And so what, what kind of grades are you guys looking at for medical school? This is a rhetorical question. I know the answer. I just want to engage you guys. So what, what are you looking at? That doesn't bode well. <laughs> so you're all expecting to get A stars right across the board, are you? Yeah? Okay. Sorry? A's, okay, brilliant. So we're, we're, we're coming down already, so we're no longer wanting A stars, we just want A's. We're beginning to accept more people. As Ollie said, we've got musicians and geographers, people that can use crayons very well. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on a secret, okay? And this does kind of relate to the MMI. You don't have to be that smart to do medicine. Medicine is a grade C subject. You do not have to be stellar at it, okay? You just have to have a working memory and be sensible. Okay. There are people in my year who I wouldn't want to be treated by, um, and there are people who I work with who they turn up and think, oh no, my job's gotten much harder today. It's a grade C subject, and that is relevant to you guys because we are not on an MMI looking for you know, the next neuroscientist. We're looking for somebody who is sensible, somebody who can think on their feet, and they can go through a series of logical progressions. Okay? The A stars and A's are just a way of filtering things, but we're looking for specific characteristics in you guys that say, actually, this person can think, this person needs to go to geography. Okay? So, I say that, we have a good example of how medicine is a grade C subject. When we're doing expedition medicine, we have the rule of threes, things that you can do without. You can do three minutes-ish without air, three hours without shelter, um, three days without water, three weeks without food, and three months without social contact. So if you end up working in ITU at Walsgrave, it's a bit of a dungeon. There isn't much social contact there. By the end of your four-month rotation, you're going to be really craving that, and you go, oh, this is slightly strange. But on a serious point, this has been done on, on research um, out in America, who they have a problem before they start. Um, if you do three months in the wilderness without contact with other people, you do begin to start talking to yourself, have hallucinations, and have other problems with that. But the base that I'm saying with that is the crux of a lot of our medicine, the base principles, are very, very simple and straightforward, and everything's building from there. So some of the questions you get in the MMI, you might think, I'm not a doctor yet. How can I answer this question? We're not asking you to be a doctor. We're asking, what does your thought process look like? Can you be, give a sensible plan here? So, um, this, this should have said, so why not just be a, a normal GP? Um, 
if you come to medical school, you can easily get through and you'll have a grand life, you'll end up driving around in you know, a BMW 3 Series, and you'll probably get married, you'll have 2.4 children, um, you'll die, you'll know all you remember, your life will continue on. Uh, that's perfectly reasonable, there is nothing wrong with that. However, you take somebody like Ollie, okay, who already at medical school um, is going beyond what he needs to and is doing extra things. The gift of medical school is that you have opportunities opened up to you. And they don't always have to be the result of positive things. You don't have to be that A-star student brown-nosing all the while. Just about every single one of the opportunities I've ever had has come as an accident or because I've been running my mouth and someone's tried to punish me for it. Genuinely, that's how I ended up uh, teaching at the medical school. I had a conversation one day with one of the consultants about the quality of the pharmacology teaching. I wasn't that impressed as a medical student. He said, go on, you think you're that good, you have a crack. Four years later, hello. <laughs> Choose the things that are going to inspire you, and that also works for your MMI questions. If you have a passion about something, say it. You know, be the person that you are. The MMIs are not about testing you, what is your knowledge, what can you do already. They're about showing us who you are. Okay? You, you cannot... I am not an artist. I cannot do it. I can take a photograph, but that's just framing, pressing a button. I can't draw out of the top of my head. There is no training I'm going to be able to do to change that, to make me as skilled at that as somebody who is a natural artist. And there will be the same thing in the room. There will be some people who are not destined for medical school. Oh no, am I saying that everyone can't have everything? You can't. There were some people who it's not right for medical school. And that's what the MMI is looking for. We are wanting to give you the opportunity to show us who you are. Okay? To show, actually, this person is utterly stellar. They've got a great set of um, thought processes. They look like somebody who I could trust to make a sensible decision. Conversely, you'll have somebody who academically does very, very well, but on the MMIs, their questions, their answers, their thought processes don't seem reassuring. You think, do I think that this person is somebody who we'll be able to train through in the end? Okay, it's about showing the best version of you that you can do. And then when you get to medical school, you can get to choose what it is you want to do with your life and how to tweak things a little bit more. So currently, despite being a regular GP, I'm trying to push into a media side of things. Um, that's probably not vastly relevant at the minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, this kind of just reiterates the previous point about how things can be completely normal in an abnormal setting. So these are our Zax comms, so these were microphones that we had to wear all the while whilst we were over there. And you grew to hate these little pieces of electronics that were sent from the devil. The problem was, for Bear Grylls the Island, you are literally dropped off about two, three hundred metres from the coast, uh, coast. You swim in, in all of your clothes, wearing your Zax comm. You get, off the, uh, get on the beach, introduce yourself, and find that there are some people who haven't taken it quite as seriously or haven't thought through their processes. So... Barnes turned up in a linen uh, shirt. Um, very fashionable, very good for a millionaire, but not great for quick drying. Um, and we then had to sleep overnight on the floor. So that I am going somewhere with this, don't worry. So we're sleeping in saltwater-soaked uh, clothes on the jungle floor. Some people, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm relatively antisocial, but I'd much prefer, and did, uh, get in at the midst of people to keep ourselves warm. But there, we're sleeping in all of our um, waterproof gear to try and keep the creepy crawlers off. Following day, we're trekking through the jungle in salt-drenched clothes, in sweat-drenched clothes, in 100% humidity. Now, I'm a sweaty chap anyway, that's why I do quite well in hot climates. It was pouring off me, not particularly pleasant. Had to go through a mangrove swamp, um, and finally we made it to the beach. Everyone stripped off, ran in, absolutely great. What does this all have to do with the Zaxcom? When we were um, in the sea, having a wash, um, because you know, we, we stank at that point, hands go around, on my backside, up, and a massive palm full of skin came off at that point. Uh, the Zaxcom supposedly sits here on your waist all the while, and these are custom made for each person. Unfortunately, mine had been made too high, and had been rubbing all the while away from my belt. So I ended up with a third degree burn on the back of my backside there. Nothing particularly stellar, but in this situation, it's relatively unusual. 
Thankfully, we got an excellent plastics nurse by complete luck who was able to sort me out whilst we were over there. But my point is that you can get yourself in situations that look horrendous, that have completely normal medicine underneath it. Life in A&E is brilliant. It's fast-paced, it's engaging, cracking chest is a great hoot. You know, there's so much stuff that you can do there. But actually, the problems are relatively normal. The person has had a heart attack because of what are called the four H's and four T's, for, uh, eight reasons that are easily reversible. And just to go with the, um, the T's, you've got toxins, so they've eaten something they don't get on with. Tamponade, so they've probably had an injury to the heart. Um, they can have a tension pneumothorax, so the lung's moving over uh, one way. And temperature, if they've got a low temperature. None of those are particularly high-level concepts. It's just, this is an unwell person, so they've had a heart attack. We adjust those things, and hopefully we should be able to regain um, circulation. So again, I go back to you with your MMI interviews, it's about seeing somebody that can work through a normal set of processes. Can you be sensible? Because we know the MMI is a pressured environment, okay? It's designed to put you under pressure and see who you are underneath. Can you still be sensible and work through those concepts to answer the question that you've got? So with any of the questions that they give you, run it over your head. Take a breather. Make sure that you understand the question. If you're not sure, ask them to repeat it for you again. It's your time, and you're going to do much better if you don't rush one of these things. These questions, going back to the four T's and four H's, are not looking for some, you know, hysteric information. It's just, can we get you to plug into a sensible, normal thought process? Um, so that's not relevant here. So uh, the island, as I say, was largely infections, infections, infections. Um, lots of that is based upon where it is that uh, you're sat on the beach. Um, three different areas, but that's probably not relevant to yourselves. As I say, this was previously ripped apart. Going back to the sensible stuff, most important thing that's in my bag most today is pseudocrem, particularly over there, because of the injuries and things that people run across. Again, medicine is a grade C subject. Some of our um, uh, compatriots over there got really badly ripped up by um, the insects and things like that. So, Thinking normally, yep, we're on a tropical island, yes, we're being attacked by sand flies, scorpions, centipedes, which really hurt. What are you going to suggest to the person who comes in? You're not medics, that's fine, give me some ideas. What are you going to say to this person who comes in and says, I've just been eaten alive on a desert island? How are you going to treat him? Okay, so I'm going to go back to... Uh, Okay. Okay, so um, we're going to give them antiseptic cream. Anything else that we think we might want to do with the person? Bear in mind, I'm not looking for medical knowledge here. I'm looking for a sensible thought process. And so far, we've got one thought process. So he's going to medical school. You lot aren't. Give some netting around the sleeping area so that the insects can't come. Okay, so that's a trying to address the problem over there, yeah. So let's put her back in the GP surgery. So she's come back off the island, but absolutely, that's a fair, fair point. So we're thinking, where's the problem come in the first place? Now, that wasn't something I'd thought of, but is a, you know, a sensible thought process. What else could we do for this patient? Salt water. Salt water, okay, yes. Walk, walk me through the process. What are you hoping salt water will do? Sure, okay, so we've got a sensible thought press. What else could we do for them? Yeah, excellent reply. Okay, so we're going back onto the island there. We could also give them pseudogram. Sometimes, uh, certainly with my lectures, I tend to push people, uh, but I'm normally actually making sure they've got some of the answers there. Thinking about a normal, straightforward process. I mean, I can see some of you going, I don't know medicine. But that's not the question. The question is, what is your thought process from it? And I think the guys who've actually thought about going, trying to prevent the problem in the first place, whilst not actually the, pro the question I posed, are still really good answers. Okay, so stay with the whole idea of um, uh, the Cambridge, what can you do with a brick? You're on a desert island, what are you going to do about teeth? How are you going to look after your dentition? Again, you don't need to be dentist here. I'm not a dentist. I say regularly to patients, look, I'm not a sadist, I'm not a dentist, I can't help, go away. So what are we going to do to prevent dental problems on the island? Make sure you don't leave any food in your mouth. 
Okay, brilliant. So depending on what we have around, so just making sure that you, you, you're trying to get anything out of your teeth if anything gets stuck there, yeah? Excellent. So, so a brilliant idea. So we've got a simple form of mouthwash. I mean, Listerine, at the end of the day, Listerine is a, uh, a disinfectant, a floor disinfectant, that they couldn't sell. They watered it down and sold millions in mouthwash. Okay, so using salt water from the sea, good idea. What else could we do to try and help with then, you know, cleaning your teeth and keeping your mouth healthy when you've got nothing? Okay, so I'll throw you a bit of bone. What are we going to? What does toothpaste do? Is it magic? Okay, how do, how does it remove plaque? Is it magic? Okay, brilliant. So it helps it rub it off. So um, so like. Yes, exactly. So it's an abrasive. It works with our toothbrush. So I'm trying to go down what I hope is a logical thought process. So one of the things that we can do is try and find something that's abrasive. Maybe not going for sand, but you can actually use uh, charcoal from the fire. You see lots of people selling it now in uh, Tesco's and things like that. Charcoal toothpaste and charcoal face wash. You can use charcoal as your abrasive substance in order to help clean your teeth. So again, not a dentist, but we're trying to go with a simple logical approach at home. We do a toothbrush, so fine, maybe use a, a, a soft stick, something like that. Use something as a replacement for our charcoal, uh, as our toothpaste, and then we've got a replacement for our mouthwash. Trying to go along a, sen a sensible thought process. Oh, and we were quite lucky that toothbrushes literally washed up whilst we're over there. And we would then boil them first, because obviously, I, knowing Phil, I really wouldn't want anything that's been in his, his mouth. Um, right, so paddy foot, that's probably not going to be relevant to you guys. Um, so these were literally what happened to our feet, and again, you can use the charcoal ash to help with that. Yes. Uh, that, that, was, that was Mercedes' feet afterwards. Ollie, how are we doing for time? Okay, right, so yeah, that, that, that was Mercedes' feet. Uh, yeah, you're, okay, fine, we'll go with the same thing. So somebody comes in, they've got nasty, nasty blisters on their feet. What are we going to do? Bear in mind, I'm not looking for medicine, I'm looking for sensible, straightforward thought processes. Okay, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Pseudocrem, it's a good antiseptic, not antibiotic. It may provide some help in terms of so soothing some. Fine, so I'm going to give you a point for that. What other sensible things could we do? Maybe just put wash it with water to get any excess debris off it. Yeah, definitely. So trying to reduce any further infections, yeah. Yeah, and that also might help reduce some friction. Bear in mind, with the immersion foot, the problem is, it's the same reason why we go wrinkly in the bath, um, you've got a lot of fluid has gone into those tissues, and they will literally slough off if you put too much um, force through them. Okay, so we've got bandages. What else can we do? No, no, I pointed at you, Chief. Keep it dry. Okay, keep it dry, yeah. So we want to try and get some of that moisture out, which goes back to, certainly on the island at least, we can put charcoal around the feet. That draws the moisture out. Okay. There was a hand here somewhere. Oh, I, at some point in, you put like, leaves on the shoes. To okay. It. Yep, it's, it's an idea. So we're going to try and reduce any abrasions and things that we've got. Okay. So none of these are particularly difficult concepts. We've all had blisters before. So we can work out what are we going to try and do with that. Okay, so bandages, pseudocrem, try and dry them out, all very sensible processes. I mean, you might think about trying to go with um, you know, an antibiotic if we get infections and things like that. You can roll with it. And like the other people did at the start, maybe we could look, what shoes are they wearing? You know, put them in a sandal, let the foot dry out, try and make sure that their foot is the correct size. The question there did not specify that they were on the island at that time. Okay. Use the question that you've been given. Don't narrow yourself with regard to uh, the question. Use the whole of it. Okay. Incidentally, there were my feet coming back um, on the plane from Panama. I've actually got my shoelaces undone because my feet swelled with the altitude, split and started bleeding on the flight. Wasn't much fun. Okay, uh, and this is one of the reasons we got the immersion foot. Huge amounts of... Uh, th this, this was where our camp was. We thought, oh, this is a great place to put a camp. It's flat, it's smooth, there's no leaves there. The reason being is because when you get torrential rain, it floods. So, yeah, our camp didn't go very well that day. Um, Tan was relative, very, very not happy. 
and people, because our feet were completely shot, some people started walking around with bare feet, which is sensible up to a point until you're walking in water that you can't see, and then I end up pulling bits of palm out of people's toes. Uh, the dehydration stuff isn't particularly relevant to you guys. Oh, here's one for you. Okay, so you need to, uh, again, going with that whole thinking outside the box and thinking beyond the question, patient comes into in a regular GP surgery and says that they're um, getting palpitations, that they can feel their heart beat, that they can feel their heart racing at times or skipping a beat. Something just feels a little bit odd. Okay, so we need to know what's going on with that patient. What kind of things do we want to ask to find out about a patient? How do we, you know, what, what questions do we want to find out about anybody? Uh, how often do you have it? Okay, brilliant. So that's talking about the actual symptoms they've got. What else? Um, their lifestyle, so their exercise, what they eat. Excellent. So that's a really, really important thing for, you know, broad non-medical problems. Yeah. Excellent. So if they're thinking, they've got the problem. Has anybody else had the problem? How long have we had the problem for? What other things? You can ask about like, the original resting heart rate and then compare it to what's happening. Okay, yeah. So how have things changed? Definitely. Any other thoughts? Just, you know, ask, does anything that strikes them, like, where do they have it? Do they always have it when they're at work? Or does it happen wherever they are? Things like that. Excellent. So we're looking at the time frames, definitely. What other things? Just think, think generally about, genuinely about people as a whole. Bear in mind, I'm not pushing you guys as doctors yet. Excellent. So that's always a really good thing, and it works for anything. If something has happened, well, of course it. Cause and effect. It's how we lead our entire lives. Again, I'm going back to simple, straightforward thought processes. So uh, the reason why that connects to the island, um, we survived a huge amount on um, coconuts over there. Um, if I see one again, I'll probably have a psychotic episode. Uh, but there is a lot of potassium in a coconut. And if you drink too much potassium, that can cause problems with your heart. It also causes quite significant diarrhea. Uh, when your diet is existing purely of coconuts, when you go to the loo, it looks like you've been eating a snowstorm. Okay, so there's our ECG to show uh, problems with those palpitations. Uh, making sure we're drinking plenty. Sorry, as I say, the, 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 the other presentation I got should have had some of these removed. That's that. Again, so uh, whilst we're over there, just to carry through... The, uh, just as out of interest because I've not removed it. Um, those are noni fruit. The fruit actually tastes, uh, smells like vomit. Uh, it's a, apparently it's um, one of the super fruits. People do sell them in weird shops around here in the UK, full of vitamins, but tastes absolutely rank. And medical school, not unlike the island, gives you some strange lectures. I, I'm not used to particularly sitting in lectures being told how to make spears and go hunting for pigs. 